Tonight, Jetstar cabin crew rushed to hospital after inhaling fumes. The LNP pledges to open Double Island to the public. A Wilmar sugar worker sacked for misconduct. And grants for small businesses to boost security. This is 7 News with Rob Bruff and Joanne Desmond. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. Four Jetstar crew members have been taken to Cairns Hospital after inhaling fumes on board a flight from the Gold Coast this morning. Investigations are now underway to determine the cause of the unusual smell. Sophie McManus has more. The women suffered from headaches, burning eyes and nausea from what Jetstar describes as an unusual smell, with one woman fainting as she exited the plane. Emergency services were called to Cairns Airport around 9.30 this morning. Four women were taken to Cairns Hospital in a stable condition for observation. Three of them were symptomatic at the time. One of them was not symptomatic but was transported as a precaution. Um, they'd been given oxygen by the staff at the scene. Two of the women were in their 20s, one in her 40s and one in her 50s. The airline says there were no passenger reports of the smell and the aircraft landed normally in Cairns. The source of the smell is still being investigated. Um, but we don't know what it is at this stage, so um, I'm not sure of the severity at this stage. The plane has been towed away from the tarmac with Jetstar confirming it will be thoroughly checked by engineers. Thank you, Sophie. A 35-year-old Gold Coast man accused of shooting another man in Cairns earlier this year will remain behind bars for at least another two and a half months. Matthew Beyonder had his case mentioned in Townsville Magistrates Court today. He's accused of shooting a 43-year-old man in the leg following a car crash on Collins Avenue on March 28, which sent streets and a school into lockdown. He'll face at Townsville Court for a committal mention on August 14. The LNP has promised to open Double Island to the public as soon as possible if elected in October. But the Barron River MP says that has always been Labor's plan after the lease was returned to the government. What once was a star attraction in the far north has been left to rot. Three weeks ago, the Land Court gave the lease for Double Island back to the state government. Now the LNP is promising to open it to the public. And I want to say today and put it on record that an LNP government, if elected in October, will retain this island and redevelop it. Shadow Minister for Rural and Regional Affairs Dale Last blames Labor for letting it go to ruin under Hong Kong billionaire Benny Wu. And an LNP government will revitalise this island and bring it back to its former glory, which should have happened years ago. But Barron River MP Craig Crawford says Labor has been fighting for almost 10 years to have the power to pull back on leases. Double Island has really been a test case and uh, it's taken a, taken a number of years to get to a point uh, for that court case to occur. It didn't happen just overnight. The current contract for the lease states a report must operate for tourism purposes. But just like the last one, it will be contingent on whoever has that lease doing a tourism product with it. And we've, we've yanked one lease and we'll yank another one if they don't do it properly. Christina Pooljack, 7 News. Wilmar has sacked a worker amid claims of misconduct during the ongoing pay dispute. The sugar producer has put forward a new proposal, but union members say it's just a short-term sugar hit. A week before the crush, union workers meet with the Fair Work Commission, dropping their wishes for a 28% pay increase down to 18% over three years. And we put that on the table and made a commitment that if, it was, if the company supported it, that we would cease all industrial action effective immediately. But Wilmar still wasn't accepting it. We'd hoped and workers had hoped that Wilmar would show the decency and respect to come to an agreement before the crush. The company not budging on a 14.2% increase over a four-year period. 18% is still way beyond what we could sustain. To sweeten the deal, it's throwing in a $20 weekly allowance for electricians and a $1,500 sign-on bonus if they vote yes to their new offer on June 10. We've made that offer with good reason, supported by facts, and with a genuine desire to, to resolve this. It comes after a Wilmar worker was sacked for serious misconduct after a confrontation. Anyone employed by our company who engages in conduct 
that's outside that that is acceptable to the company, we'll deal with it. Union workers are now planning to boycott Goodman Fielder products owned by Wilma. We're asking the community, if you support these workers and you want to get behind these workers, that you can support the boycott. We're not asking for pay that doesn't happen elsewhere in the industry. We're not asking for mining money or rock star money. We're just asking for a fair go for our sugar community. Wilma will report back to the Fair Work Commission on June 21. Bethany Ross, 7 News. Far North emergency services have been bolstered coming into the bushfire season. The SES in Cairns has received $460,000 in state government funding for new equipment. $695,000 will go to the SES in Cape York, with almost half to be used for the Woodjil Woodjil area. The grants are two of 60 across the state. Now, small businesses are getting a financial boost to invest in security. $3 million in state government funding will be on offer to build resilience from cyber security to engine immobilisers. But the opposition claims it's a smokescreen. The average cost of a cybersecurity crime on a small business could exceed $50,000. Now the state government have announced grants of $5,000 to help prevent them from falling victim altogether. And through this grants program, small businesses will be able uh, to boost their operations, productivity. They'll also be able to boost both their online and real world uh, security. It's a $3 million addition to the Business Basics Resilience Program, which is a $250 million package set to last until 2027. And people have until the 11th of June uh, to be able uh, to jump online. You need to be a Queensland small business. The money could be used for all security measures from alarm systems and CCTV installations through to engine immobilisers. Um, but what, what, what I think everyone's forgot about is the small end of town and the critical importance of small business being able to keep their cyber security details intact, their customers, their money. But the LNP says more needs to be done to help small businesses. Youth crime crisis, electricity prices, uh, housing, the housing crisis, these are all impacting small and family business. Christina Pulljack, 7 News. And ahead tonight in 7 News, a look at what's on across our region this weekend. And the countdown is on until Masters athletes compete in the tropics. Cairns turns to 7 News to keep up to date on local issues. And we want you to be a part of it. If there's something happening in your street, your suburb, we want to know about it. Send us a message or drop us an email. Nice having you with us here on 7 News. Well, the Far North Queensland Hospital Foundation has launched its biggest campaign, aiming to raise $4.3 million for a surgical robot that Danny would be used for some urological, gynaecological and rectal procedures. What we're really about is getting state-of-the-art equipment and, uh, and attracting and keeping the best clinicians that we possibly can. Now, a reminder, if you'd like to donate, go to the Far North Queensland Hospital Foundation website. Well, the countdown is on with a year to go until Cairns hosts its seventh edition of the Great Barrier Reef Masters Games. Six new sports, including pickleball, have already been locked in. In 12 months, Cairns' courts, fields and pitches will be full of action for the Great Barrier Reef Masters Games. The event providing sporting opportunities and a major boost to the local economy. Last time in 2023 we had 4,500 competitors which was great and that saw almost 4 million pumped into our local economy. Along for the ride this year is Ambassador Ashley Brazel, an AFLW star and Commonwealth Games gold medal winning netballer. I think for me, you know, I still think of myself as a young 18 year old throwing the ball around but I actually could compete as a master which is scary. 20 sports are already locked in, including new additions like pickleball, futsal and wakeboarding, and it's hoped more inclusions are on the way. Sport for all, from young all the way up to parents like me, I think is so important because it's a place you can just be you, have fun and get out and throw a ball around. Keen competitors are invited to register their interest now on the game's website. James Ingram, 7 News. Let's have a look now what's happening around our region over the weekend. Here's Frank. Thanks, Robin Joe. 
Head to the Cairns Esplanade on Saturday and immerse yourself in culture for the Cairns African Festival. There'll be plenty of food stalls, traditional dancing, fashion parades, art displays and breathtaking performances. Tickets are available at the gate. It's from midday at the Western Events Lawn. Enjoy a night of laughter with comedian Ross Noble. He's in the far north for his latest stand-up tour, Jibber Jabber Jamboree, this Saturday night at CPAC. Who sort of stands there and goes, hello, uh, hello, uh, hello. Doors open at 6.30 for a 7.30 start. Tickets are available at ticketlink.com.au. And finish your weekend at the Cairns Eco Fiesta. Explore clean tech and wander through market stalls offering sustainable living solutions. It starts at 10am at the Munro Martin Parklands. Entry is free. If there's anything you'd like to include in this segment next week, you can send us an email at newscns at 7.com.au or post on our What's On Facebook page. Have a great weekend. Great, right, thanks for that, Frank. Sounds like there's plenty happening in the far north. Jibber jabber jamboree. Try for that ten times quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Great weekend. Now, big praise for a Cowboys debutant, mate. Yeah, eh? there certainly is. Bruffy, a veteran North Queensland prop, believes Jamal Shibasaki will bring some sparkling attack to their pack. We'll have more on that next. And Holmes and the Hammer, the Queensland centres looking to make Origin One a painful night for the Blues. Stream 7 News anywhere, anytime, live and on demand on 7 Plus. And with 7news.com.au, you'll know the news now. And welcome back. Well, Valentine Holmes is taking his ex-Cowboys teammate Hamaso Tabuai Fado under his wing to help form a deadly duo in the Maroon Centres ahead of Game 1. And ahead of his 18th Queensland appearance, Holmes knows just how much the pressure heats up under the Origin Spotlight. It might not be his first time, but it doesn't make this series any less special for Valentine Holmes. Just to be able to, you know, be here and, and to be given a, another chance to, to wear this jersey, it's, um, yeah, super grateful and can't wait. Season struggles with the Cowboys and emerging excellence meant he wasn't a shoe-in for selection this series. I knew that there was going to be a bit of you know, challenge and around it all and... You know, I was confident in my own abilities. And so was Billy Slater. It's clear he's built for the Origin Arena. It is obviously a different, you know, different beast out there. It's, you know, the adrenaline gets here, the crowd gets here, the game's a lot faster, you complete higher. And he's got himself an apprentice. Centre isn't Hemiso Tabuai Fido's usual position at club level, but his former club mate is giving him the confidence to wear the number four. He's helped me... Um... Just, just defence-wise, um, obviously it's different to fullback. They make as much tackles um, as you do in centre. Um, but, yeah, just picking um, off him and, um, and learning stuff. But there is one cowboy he won't be as keen to meet come Wednesday night. North Queensland's only blue blood, Reese Robson, is raring to go. Definitely, yeah, a little bit more comfortable um, knowing I've, I've played a couple of games now and... Um, and yeah, really take this game on with, with both hands and uh, make a difference. He edged out Abby Corrissau for the number nine, but the question now is, will he play the full 80? Definitely preparing to play 80, but um, not going not gonna to save myself for that, for that at all. Uh, I'm just going to go out and um, play my game and go after it. But one thing is for sure, there is no love lost with his Queensland Cowboys. And just another bloke in a maroon jersey at the end of the day. Emma Halliday, 7 News. Meanwhile, veteran Cowboys forward Jordan McLean wants to see this week's squad have a crack when they meet the Roosters on Sunday without their origin reps. And that includes 18-year-old debutant Jamal Shibasaki, who has already impressed with his dazzling attack. It's not every day you get to meet a sporting hero, let alone lace up your boots alongside one. I've watched all these players growing up and I finally get the chance to take the field with them, so it's pretty unreal. Jamal Shibasaki will make his NRL debut on Sunday in Sydney. As to where he will play, the forward doesn't know just yet. Coaches know I can play a bit of middle and back row, so I'm not really fussed on where they put me, to be honest. It's as long as I do my job for the team, I'm pretty happy. And if anyone knows what it's like to take on that task as a team, it's Jason Tamalalo. Give me some advice. Um, 
was also, you know, had a few laughs, you know, tried to get my mind off it, which was pretty good. Another veteran forward has pretty big raps on the Ignatius Park graduate. Jordan McLean is happy to share the spotlight if Jamal shares his meat pies. Definitely a tacker. Um, if you watch any of his games there at Cup, there he doesn't mind scoring a try, so hopefully he can bring a couple up here because I don't score many, so maybe he might score one for me. The young gun is one of at least six changes to the squad, but McLean says you can't rule them out. Obviously the starting team will change and all the rest of it, but yeah, it's just exciting. Um, it's a new challenge and it's uh, something yeah, we've got to grab it by a scruff in the neck and just have a crack this week. Emma Halliday, 7 News. AFLW action is returning to Cairns in October with Hawthorne today announcing a new three-year partnership with AFL Cairns. The Hawks will take on Melbourne at Kazali Stadium on Thursday night, October 24. The league's partnership with Hawthorne began last year when the Hawks were beaten by 11 points by Richmond in the region's first AFLW game. Mary Fowler and the Matildas will soon hit the field in Adelaide to start their final pre-Olympic series against China. Kansas' Winnie Heatley is also in the squad and will continue her push for a Matildas debut and a spot on the plane to Paris. It's a rare chance for Fowler to play in front of home fans and it's against the reigning Asia Cup champions. It's always a nice thing to come back here and um, play in front of a home crowd, so I'm excited for the games. You know, I think I'm someone that just tries to enjoy the day, take it for, you know, what it is. So just here to do my best and, and have a bit of fun and we'll see what, what happens. We'll find out tonight. Kickoff is at 8.10pm. And that's it for sport tonight. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you, Dave. And stay with us after the break. Livio joins us with all the weather details and Scotty will tell us where those fish are biting. Good evening, Livio Regano with tonight's weather. Showers fell more or less uniformly across Queensland today, but from tomorrow the two halves of the state will take on different trajectories. Northern Queensland should start to clear, while southern areas prepare for a rainy weekend. 28 degrees the top in Cairns today after a low this morning of 21, certainly a mild night. Bulgan Creek scored the state's highest rainfall of 57 millimetres. To the satellite loop now, firstly around the coast and ranges, it's just speckled cloud if you like, producing the odd shower here and there, nothing heavy apart from those usual falls on the Cassiary coast. More importantly now, the big cloud band linked to an upper level trough in front, which you'll, which you'll see in a moment, uh, moving across central Australia. It's already rained over the red centre, which is unusual of course, and that will be moving across Queensland over coming days, peaking in rainfall over southern Queensland on Saturday. Today's chart, the main high has now finally moved offshore. There's a little bit left behind. Wouldn't worry too much that. East coast winds haven't changed too much, but inland winds have now shifted to the north, and we've got that cold front and upper trough bringing the cloud in from behind. Tomorrow's chart, in the tropics, the isobars start to spread apart. That'll reduce the strength of the trade winds, which in turn will reduce the showers. But in the south, the opposite happens because this trough moves into New South Wales, increasing cloud cover and showers. Then on the outlook chart, this is the peak of the rain activity, genuine rain over southern Queensland, with the upper trough and front right on top. Now the latest from Bond, the boating forecast for Cairns waters, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots tomorrow, a 2 metre easterly swell outside the reef, continuing 15 to 20 knots right through the weekend. Tomorrow is the half moon neap tide, which happens twice in a lunar month, or about once every two weeks. It's a time when there's minimal ocean movement and tidal variation. Northern uh, tropical coast and tablelands, slight chance only of showers tomorrow. Cairns 28 degrees, 23 for Atherton, Innisfail and Mariba 27. And looking ahead for Cairns, Monday next week we'll see a fairly abrupt switch to cooler nights and brighter days in the wake of that cold front. Some showers possible ahead of the change. For Atherton, again you'll notice it in the night time temperatures, not hugely though. They drop on Monday, Tuesday and then pick up again. Let's finish tonight with a lovely photo of a double rainbow, symbol of hope, as rainbows most often occur during the clearance phase of a rain event. You'll notice the colours of the outside rainbow are the reverse of the inside one. Thanks John Kesby for that photo, taken from Sunshine Beach, a splendid evening one and all, here's Scotty with the fishing report. 
Yeah, good on you, Olivia. Looks like that weather's going to play the part for the weekend. Light winds forecast, so the boaties should get a chance to sneak offshore. I can report the pelagic action has been going great guns with plenty of tuna and mackerel about. Here's a couple of tips. Now, there's a nice run in the tide, so heading out and chasing a few fish for those keen to chase mackerel along with tuna, that early morning tide change will be the go. Look for your bait areas with a bit of current and troll with your liveys. Holgar along with hard-bodied lures. Now, for the smaller mackerel species, casting slugs along with plackies into the feeding fish has been working a treat. Also, expect a couple of tuna mixing with them. Both long tail and mac tuna are still feeding really well. There's really good sweet lip also up in the shallower parts of the reef with a couple of cracking big coral trout taking liveys mixed in with them. Strip baits also working pretty well. Back in those rivers and creeks, the flathead have been going gangbusters with plenty being caught on both baits along with small three to five inch soft plackies. Now check this out, keen young angler Jamison Blake nailed this lovely flathead out of his secret flatty hole recently. Good on you Jamison. Now, look, if you're chasing more outdoor action, make sure you join myself and Olivia Dean Saturday 5.30 for Creek to Coast. We are on a caravanning adventure into northern New South Wales. It's one not to miss. Good luck if you hit the water over the weekend. See you next week. Great. Thanks for that, Scotty. And that's all from us for tonight. Thanks for your company. And, of course, anything you'd like to watch again, try our 7 Plus app or our page, 7news.com.au. See you tomorrow night. Good night. Good night.